Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a problem from the Turkey Junior National Olympiad, problem number one. I remember the first time I solved a functional equation that was of this type, the solution just blew my mind. I mean on one hand, it's almost obvious, but on the other I'm like, wow, what was that? Anyways, this is that kind of problem, which I suggest you try for a minimum of half an hour, ideally an hour, but not more than two hours. If, on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you give this problem a shot for the first 15 minutes. And without further ado, let's begin. So the problem says we have a non-constant function from the real numbers to the real numbers, and we need to prove there exist x and y such that f of x plus y is less than f of x times y. Now the first question I invite you to ask yourself is, how do we even do this thing? Like, please take a minute or two and, re and ask yourself, how are we going to prove the existence of x and y for some f? Like, how can we, like, how do we even begin? How do we work with this? And this is the answer which really blew my mind the first time I saw it on a problem, is to prove there exists x and y such that f of x plus y is less than f of x, y. What is the contrapositive? What is the assuming the contrary? Well, assuming the contrary is that for each x and y, we have f of x plus y is greater than or equal to f of x, y, and f is a non-constant function. So now what our functional equation really is, or mean, our functional inequality is this. And now we can plug stuff in here. Now to me personally, this sort of change of signs blew my mind the first time I saw it. And now, if you didn't figure this out already, I invite you to take another 10 to 15 minutes and play around with the function, noting that f is not a constant function. So now that you've hopefully paused, let's plug some stuff in. So what do we have? Well, the first thing for me is if I plug in y is equal to zero, what do I get? I get f of x is greater than or equal to zero for every single x. Okay, so f of x is greater than or equal to some constant. Now to prove f of x is a constant, what I need is to have f of zero on this side. So the next thing I plug in is y equals negative x. And what we get is that f of x minus x is f of zero is greater than or equal to f of x times negative x, f of negative x squared. Now we know that f of negative x squared is greater than or equal to f of zero by this thing right here. So now, if we just plug in x equals like the square root of, actually no, the square root of x is equal to t, where x is a positive integer, we have that the f of negative t, where t is greater than zero, is going to be equal to f of zero, is going to be equal to some constant. And now you can already maybe see what the contradiction will be. We have the f of x is equal to zero for all x less than or equal to zero. I mean, it's equal to f of zero for all x less than or equal to zero, which is a constant. And the contradiction will probably be that f of everything is equal to f of zero. Now I invite you to take another 10 to 15 minutes and try to go for the positive real numbers. Okay, and the way we do that is the following. So we have f of x plus y greater than or equal to f of x, y. And we know that if we get a negative number, we are good to go. And we know that f of every x is greater than or equal to f of zero. So we need something that's f of zero on this side right here. And we need a positive real number on this side right here. So how do we do that? Well, if I plug in two negative numbers here, I will get a positive number here. And that's pretty much the idea. To make things simple, let's plug in y is equal to negative one and x is equal to some x is just negative. Then we have f of x minus one, which is a negative number, negative plus a negative is a negative, is greater than or equal to f of negative x. Now f of x, negative x, is greater than or equal to zero. And we know this thing because it's negative is equal to f of zero, and this thing is greater than or equal to f of zero. And now we have that f of all negative x, where x is less than zero, i.e. f of y 
is going to be equal to f of 0, where y is a positive real number. And this implies that f of x is going to be equal to f of 0 for all real numbers x, which is a contradiction because we assume at the beginning that this function is not a constant function. So the initial assumption that there do not exist a single f x and y such that this is true has led us to a contradiction. So that means there do exist x and y such that f of x plus y is less than f of x y. And as always, thanks for problem solving.